So Sebastian, um, this place is called the Melke Stiftskeller. Absolutely right. And and Melk is quite some miles away. So so you know. the city of Melk is about one hour outside of Vienna along the Danube River. It's uh, where the famous wine region Wachau is um, beginning. The uh, Benedict Benedictine Monastery of the Abbey of Melk. They own this place for 600 years. The Abbey itself is around 1,000 years old. And they bought this place uh, 600 years ago in the medieval times in Vienna to store their uh, agricultural goods like wine, cabbage, and um, that sorts, sorts of goods to sell it in the city. And over the years, they developed it to a restaurant after there was no use for a large wine storage within the city center. And it has been in their property ever since. There's still um, apartments for the monks upstairs. And the restaurant is now um, always run as an authentic Austrian gasthouse with traditional food and local and regional um, ingredients. So it's really strange in Vienna because you often see these uh, kind of unassuming doorways. They don't look like they have much behind. And then when you step through them, you have these incredible interiors like you see here. Yes. And, so and you would never know from the outside. Absolutely. You know? it's, it's a hidden treasure. Yeah. Um, with Vienna, with all its little alleys and courtyards, you never know what to expect. Um, also, we're pretty hard to find for tourists or non-locals. Um, we always have problems that people keep calling. We have a reservation, but we cannot find the restaurant. Um, yeah, because people move so far in the, in the streets that they don't recognize there's a, a little alley and a little doorway on the side. Um, but also it's kind of charming that, that people, if they just stumble in uh, or trembling in, that they feel like they have discovered uh, something of Vienna that uh, not everyone is able to find. So yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be underground and to be a little bit hidden and to have a mysterious, uh, charming ambiance. The other thing about this place is it's huge. Like there's a whole bunch of rooms. I mean, this is just one this room. This is one room. Have. It's our main room um, where the people come in. So one uh, way direction. You can come only in from one entry and you have to leave the same way out. So there's only one uh, way to move in. So this is our first room with the bar. This is where our walking guests are to be seated or smaller groups. And it's just one of out of seven rooms. We have 320 uh, seats in seven rooms uh, with different and various sizes. Um, so the first three rooms are definitely the oldest ones. So from 1492. Um, the ones in the back are, there's more modern, let's say modern um, brickwork. So I'd be curious to ask you, how did you come by this place? So um, for anyone who knows the Abbey of Melk, there's a large school attached to it. It is um, Gymnasium Unter- und Oberstufe, so it is from 10 to 18. It's like a, like a high school kind high of High school with uh, element, elementary school, I think. And um, yeah, I went to school there with all my siblings. And so I know that the teacher and the monks, some of them, the Melk is a rather small town, uh, very familiar ambiente and everyone knows each other. And when I was working as a chef in Viennese restaurants, I heard about from friends that the Abbey is looking for a new, um, new guy to run the restaurant because the, the, the guy before me, um, they were parting ways. So I sent my application and uh, had to, to show a business plan and um, a, a concept for the restaurant, which was on the hand because it's a traditional Austrian restaurant. So I didn't have to change much. And yeah, so they, they chose me to, to run it. So which room are we in now then? So we're now in the Riesling Stübel. It's um, the smallest room we have. We also call it our poker room because the table looks like uh, for illegal Pokemon tournaments. So how has it been for you um, running this place, like, like personally? Personally, so the first year, the first one and a half year were 
enormously intense and stressful. Um, I was working in, in the gastronomy uh, for eight or nine years and I did a culinary school for five years. So I think I was know what I was doing in, in, in matters of kitchen and serving. So if you want a one man show uh, and you're responsible for every aspect of a company, um, yeah, the, you never, you never bored. So what are your main jobs now? Like, so like my, yeah, my main job is um, ordering all the goods we need for the restaurant, making the schedules for the staff, try to work out corporations um, with other companies, uh, tourists, offices, hotels, um, try to be the connection between the kitchen and the service uh, when there's high season or on very busy days to coordinate bigger groups, that everyone is getting their food and time, um, not to overstress out the staff. So if we're pretty full, we have to keep people um, waiting a little bit because we have more space than we can actually serve. If we have 320 person um, at the same time, uh, it is just not able to do it in the kitchen. The kitchen is very small actually, yeah. because it was more run like a Heuriger. Everyone who knows Heuriger is it's just a cold, um, cold food serving vineyard restaurant. And so the kitchen was not meant to have a warm kitchen. The, the space is rather small. There's only three, maximum four chefs able to work at the same time. And 200 guests is already a challenge for four chefs. Um, yeah, so I help there to coordinate um, the restaurant, coordinate the amount of people coming in. So what is it about running a restaurant that, that satisfies you personally? Like, like, what is it that you get out of it? Well, I come from a very big family. I have five siblings and a lot of cousins. And so family events and family parties were always highlights in my life. And I always like to organize private parties already when I was in school. I did events with up to a hundred persons in, in event locations outside and the countryside where I grew up. So for me, giving people the possibility to enjoy a cozy evening, having a good meal, having a laugh and, and giving them a space where to, to celebrate was always fascinating me. And if I have guests leaving the restaurant, giving me thanks that they had an, uh, a tremendous time. That is, that is the, the moments that I, I like my job, I love my job. Um, and I think a good servant is, is a, key, key, uh, a key moment, a key thing in, in this experience. Um, they can either be in the background and just do the serving and leave the guests um, undisturbed or sometimes you, you feel the atmosphere if the guests want to interact with you and then you maybe tell some jokes, listen to some stories, tell something about the restaurant. It is this um, flexibility in the contact with, with guests all over the world. So we ha I think we almost had every country on earth sitting here in the restaurant. Oh, damn it. So I think we had um, guests from every country in the world. I had people from Australia, Tasmania, we had Mexicans, people from Chile, um, Iceland, so all over the place. And I just talk to people what they like about Vienna, uh, try to make some, some uh, comparison with um, restaurants or their, their life in, in their countries and just tell about what they were doing. So there were people who's a simple male officer. We had other restaurants owner. I had politicians, great manufacturers. So all, yeah, the American ambassador. So really a, a huge variety of people and, and then you get a good sense of, of I don't know, what, what the world is like in, in, other, in other places. And there's always stories to tell. Um, yeah, this, this is the stuff that, uh, that I like. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Cool. No, I think cool. it's I think it's good.